Good morning, everyone. At least my voice is coming back. Um, up until last night, I sounded like the, uh, the great big ugly guy on uh, Highlander. Yeah, uh, taking you back. There's one line in there, you know. Of course you are. That's why the guy talked. Um, neighbor. We got to say neighbor. We are neighbors now. Good to see everybody. Uh, today we're looking at, what are we looking at? Signs. Sign, sign, everywhere a sign, blocking up the scenery. Not those kind of signs, but we'll talk about it. Now, I got that in your head, and you're going to be going, oh, that's Tesla. No, that's a five-man electric band, actually. Go back to my era. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, welcome to church. Any visitors here? If you are, you're going, oh, my. Is this the way the whole service is going to be? And the answer is because I'm on cold medicine. Um, what else is happening? Oh, uh, Paul's going to talk to you afterwards, and he's going to give you his opinion on pastor opinion. And uh, they had a nice visit yesterday. I hear they didn't scare them off. Um, they separated the men, from the, the men from the boys, and that's the best way to do it. And uh, he's going to give you a little bit of an overview of, uh, they had a nice visit, I hear. I already bent Jeff Little's ear last night, a little bit. But anyway, um, we are glad to see you. We're going to be using divine service setting four, and that's Paul's favorite setting, he told me. Yeah, I don't forget. Always be careful what you tell a pastor. And that begins on page 203, or we'll have it up on the slides. Without further ado, let's sing a song we know. And the song we know is Beautiful Savior, 537.
Shall we rise as we make our beginnings in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of our sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Together then, Almighty God, have mercy upon us. We are His is our sins, and for you have the everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I gladly say that our sins are forgiven us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, for our intro, we're going to be utilizing Psalm 91, the first ten verses. If you would join with me, we will just speak these words in unison as our intro, which once again is our time to enter into the presence of God. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler, you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray and join with me again in these words, if you will. O oh God, you see that of yourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversity that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. As a reminder, we skip the, uh, the praise song, that portion in our service, because this is Lent. The Old Testament lesson is from the book of Genesis, chapter 17. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you, 
and may multiply you greatly. Then Abraham fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from the book of Romans, chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jeff. Shall we rise out of respect for the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory and to you, O Lord. Lord. And Jesus went to, the, to his disciples to the villages of Caesar, Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, <coughs> and others one of the prophets. And he asked, he asked them, but who do, you say, who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get, be, get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And he called to him the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? And for what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words 
in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Danny. We join our voices in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was the Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, and was buried, and the Lord of the rose again, according to the scriptures. Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I one holy Christian and apostolic church, a baptism for the remission of sins. You may be seated. We have uh, sung this song before. It was one that I was thinking of because when you look at what the Lord Christ has accomplished for us, what a God of wonders He truly is. And we're going to be emphasizing that a bit in our message today and in our songs. But uh, if you, uh, you catch on, we've done this before, and you've got the refrain in your bulletin or you have that up on your screen. So whenever we get to the refrain, the chorus, join in with me, if you will. And we'll see if my voice hangs in there. Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, Heavens are your tabernacle, glory to the Lord Most High. Here's your part. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy. Universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and Early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. When I stumble in this darkness, I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy. Holy universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. God 
God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are ho holy, holy. Universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth, hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, <laughs> you are holy, holy. Universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. What do you see when you look at the night sky? Stars. A full moon last night. That's why you were howling. I heard you howling outside. <laughs> All right, somebody go get Ella. Oh, yeah. I want Howler like a, um, a hound because I can do it too well. I had one. And he would, that hound would wait until I got right there by the car and I'd look in there and I was going to check the oil or something. He'd get about a foot away and he'd go, Oh, it was like, holy smokes. And then he would do that in the middle of the night, especially when there was a full moon. At least his fangs didn't grow longer or anything strange. But when you look at the night sky, you see the stars. And I've told you before how many stars there were. You know, we used to think there were 400 million of them in the sky. And then they found out there were billions and billions of them, like Carl Sagan used to say back on the Cosmos program. Well, the Lord God took Abraham out, as we read in our Old Testament lesson, and he said, I am going to give you children, as many as the stars in the sky. Now the catch here was that Abram was already 99 years old. He had already slept with his wife's maidservant. My uncle used to say he wouldn't let his kids read the Bible because it was a dirty book. Well, there's a little truth in that. He had Ishmael already. And he said, I'm going to make you a great nation. And no longer is your name going to be Abram, but Abraham. And then he goes on, I know he talks a little bit more, he says, and furthermore, your wife Sarah is going to have a child. And Abram basically couldn't believe this. He said, what, I'm almost 100 years old and my wife is almost 90? And we're going to have another son? Take Ishmael, he's already here, he's healthy. But God said, no, I'm going to give you a special son. The odd thing about all this is that our Old Testament skips over a whole section. Did you notice that we skip from verse, uh, well, we, we lay off at verse 7 and pick up at verse 15. <coughs> Excuse me. In that middle section, God said, that I am going to choose you, Abraham, and your descendants, and this will be a sign. <coughs> we might have a short sermon today, that's all i got to say. And this will be the sign, that you will be circumcised as well as all of the male members of your family and your household and your descendants after you. Now, I don't know about you, how many of you men remember your circumcision? 
Thank God they do it when you're very young, right? Can you imagine being 99 years old and your doctor says, well, you've got to be circumcised. Would you do it? Now, you'll have to explain that. The kids aren't paying attention, but your parents have to explain what that is when they get older. But this was going to be a sign that these people were set aside especially to be God's people. And the sign was going to be their circumcision. I know there's a lot of signs we have along the roads. Um, There's a pristine part of Highway 50 where I live, and they turned it into four lane and going into Jeff City, and there's actually a section of 20 miles where there's no signs. No advertisements for the local cafe. No advertisements for the local dog grooming. Although there's one that's kind of cute. Dirty, hairy dog grooming. I kind of like that one. But signs go here and there. But this was going to be a special sign that these were people who were different. These were people who were going to follow the Lord God. These were people that were going to live a life according to what the Lord had in store for them, and yet they did not do it. We know the history of the Old Testament, don't we? Even before the coming of Moses and the giving of the law, we had all kinds of shenanigans going on in the book of Genesis. The people did not follow the Lord, whether they were circumcised or not. The people did not... (coughs) live a life in accordance with what the Lord wanted for them. It puts me in mind of ourselves. <coughs> hey, Paul, you still got that sermon um, that you read the other day? Okay. My wife says, uh, every time you go up there, you get sick. I think you're just allergic to Washington, Illinois. I'll get there. Hang on. Oh, I know what help. I'm going to go talk to Lou. He's got the solution. But when we talk about this, and we as people of God, God has chosen us too. God has given us His law. We are past that point. He has said you are going to be people that were chosen before the foundations of the world were set in place. And he gave us laws to live by, right? Especially that first one where it says, you shall have no other God before him. We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. That's what Luther says. Just keep that one commandment and you keep them all. But the people didn't follow that. The people did not live according to what God would have for them. And that... History continued all the way through the Old Testament that people were following other gods. They were breaking that first commandment, which was the worst that they could possibly do. Worse than breaking any of the other ones. (coughs) Because God is a jealous God. He likened it unto somebody who is not... (coughs) Maybe I'll just cut to the Gospel. Hang on. (coughs) seriously I might just have to they were bad people let's just put it that way and we are bad people we didn't follow that because circumcision was not enough circumcision was not what was going to save them they needed something more than just that sign and the sign that they needed was to come because when circumcision was given to Abram And his name was changed to Abraham, which means the father of many nations. That was not the end in and of itself. It was something that was going to point towards the future. And that future was that one of those children, of all those children that were numerous as the stars, would be none other than the Savior of the world. And the sign that they would be needing, and the sign that we need, is the sign of the cross. It was all pointing towards that. We have that sign of the cross so many times in our service, don't we? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We do it at the end at the benediction. 
We do it at numerous times. Any place you have in the worship service where the little red cross is, <coughs> people will make that sign of the cross. Because it was on that cross that our Lord made it right. It was on that cross that the Lord showed us that it's more than just circumcision of the flesh. That was an outward sign that they were followers of the Lord God, but what we needed and what they needed was circumcision of the heart. You see, it does no good just to paint a nice picture just to make lip service work for yourself that you were a follower of the Lord God, but you have to live according to what you say you believe. It says in Colossians chapter 2, if I can get through it, 9 to 13, I'll give you the gist. That when we are circumcised, we are circumcised to set aside for the Lord. When we are baptized, we are baptized into the very death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we live by that wonderful sign. And that wonderful sign being that we are now Christians. Circumcision was not to be the final act. It was always to point towards the one who was to come. Circumcision was never meant to be the saving act. It was just the beginning. It was just pointing towards that saving act that Christ had on the cross of Calvary. The signs that we have been given, the signs that we have before our eyes of our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ all around us, are the signs that we should carry out into the world. When people look at you, they should be able to say, there goes a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, one of His own. It should be obvious. It should be obvious to your neighbors that you're a believer in the Lord. It should be obvious to your workers. It should be obvious to your people that you're standing in the line at Walmart with. It should be obvious wherever you go. That you are the Lord God's. That you have been circumcised in the heart. That you will be His forevermore. Even as you were foreseen to be His before the beginning of time. That's the kind of sign that we truly need. In the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. By the way, Pastor Pinion said 12 minute sermons were long enough, didn't he? We'll keep them in prayers. Let's return a little bit back to our Lord for what he has given, and thank you for putting up with the...
And yeah, it is time for him to retire. Every time he comes here, he looks like he's about to keel over. Pastors never retire. They just kind of clutch their chest and fall over in the pulpit. I hope that doesn't happen today just yet. Because I still have to get a couple more things put together on the Corvette. My wife will never get any money for it if it never starts. So i got to at least do that. No, we're going to pray, all kidding aside. Uh, Reva and Randy, they have a number of people we're going to pray for and their family. Uh, a lot of news they got yesterday that's difficult uh, about their relatives having problems. We're going to pray for uh, people in our congregation. You know, we pray for Carolyn. We pray for Virginia. We're going to pray for uh, Pastor Pinion as he's going to give a, an answer in a couple of weeks uh, whether or not he will come and serve us. Uh, just a lot of things that we have. And then we'll have a moment of silence that we can raise up people that we are concerned about. So shall we pray? We do, Heavenly Father, come before You. We thank You for all that You have given to us. We thank You for the wonderful sign that You have given of Your Son's crucifixion on that cross, but more so, the empty cross. That sign of His conquering sin, death, and the devil on our behalf. Thank You for that. As that cross is placed within our minds and our hearts, Make it be like a circumcision of our hearts. That truly, Lord God, we might go about into this world and live a life that is according to what you would have us to do. A life of love for you and love for one another, even as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we pray for Reva and Randy's family. We pray for Roy. We pray for Angie. We pray for Betty. These are your children. Let them give over to you, Lord God, the burden of carrying them. They have physical needs, Lord God, and you will give them a good measure of your healing touch according to your divine will. But most importantly, Lord, remind them that you have not given up on them, that you are still there, that you still care, and that your healing goes to their spirits in a resounding yes in the name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Pastor Pinion that as he contemplates coming here to be our pastor, that you would give to him, Lord God, the wisdom that comes down from above. Let him know that that is the right thing to do, if it is. Let him know, Lord God, that if he comes here, you will send somebody to take care of his congregation. Let him know that you will work out all things, Lord God, financial things, the things about graduation, the things about jobs, all of that is in your divine hands. Be with him as he contemplates. Lord, in your mercy. We take this moment of silence as we raise up to you people that we are concerned about. <coughs> These are your children, Lord God. Use us as ambassadors to reach out, not just folded hands, but reach out helping hands, to live lives, Lord God, not just for you, but for other people on your behalf, to use our mouths, Lord God, not for silent prayers only, to speak the wonderful message of your Son, Jesus, crucified and risen again. Be with all of these folks who are having difficulties and use us as your workers in the field. Lord, in your mercy... All of these things, Lord God, we pray not because we're worthy, but we pray them in the blessed name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. If we could rise as we go into our service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow upon us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you set your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh 
and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead, and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death, and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. If you believe in Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God, yea, God himself, if you have examined yourself as I have and know that you need what is offered here, the forgiveness of sins, if you believe that the very body and blood given and shed on the cross are here as we say, in with and under the bread and wine, you're welcome to come and dine with the Lamb. It was on the same night in which our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed that he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given to death for you. This do as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, Jesus took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you drink of it. This is my blood shed for you for the new covenant. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord be with you always. body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Take and drink the true blood of our Lord, poured out on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of sins. May his true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life eternal. Depart in peace. Amen.
Shall we rise? Thank you, gentlemen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us sing our Nunc Dimittis, the song of Simeon, after he saw the baby brought and presented in the temple, and he had waited for so long to see the Messiah. If we could, uh, let us pray together our post-communion collect. That's just meaning that we have a prayer of thanks to follow our Lord's Supper. Together, we give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Join with me then before we finish our service in the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Give those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we finish with a kind of a Lenten carol type of a thing, but although it's used in many different parts of the church here, in thee is gladness.
Paul, if you'd like to come up and give these folks a report on Pastor Pinion. After this morning, you better call him and say, hey, we need you fast. Yeah, just, I know people had questions about how yesterday went, and so I've been asked by maybe six or eight people so far. So, um, it, was a, it was a nice day. We met Pastor Pinion and his wife Jeanette and her oldest daughter, and we went to lunch with them and then spent a couple hours here looking at the church and the parsonage and answering his questions. Uh, he's a real pleasant man. I think he would fit real well with our congregation. He you don't know where the Holy Spirit's going to lead him, but we certainly got no indication that he was reluctant to consider this call. I think he's going to give it pretty prayerful consideration. Uh, I think he would he would work real well. Uh, we had six members of the call committee. Uh, some of them are here this morning. Jenny Real was there. Mallory Hanover was there. Connie Gold, Goldberg was was there. So we we had. Uh, a real nice meeting. Um, asked a lot about our congregation's demographics, you know, what's the age breakouts, how many people generally attend services, how many people do we see in Sunday school, how many people are in our youth groups, and all those kind of questions. So he was generally interested in what was going on here at the church and certainly gave us no sign that uh, he wasn't really going to give us good consideration. So. That's about all I can say right now. You know, he said in two weeks he would let us know. So keep him in your prayers and uh, keep us in your prayers and his congregation. Thank you. Since I have, uh, you've been seeing me cough all through the service, I'm going to let you all go. The Lord's richest blessings. Um, know that I shook hands with every one of you in my mind and you're going, ooh. Um, go in peace and serve the Lord with gladness.